All right, so let's talk about changes to the budget line. So we've kind of defined what this budget line is. We've kind of seen what it looks like graphically. And now let's talk about, you know, what can change the budget line. And so when income or prices change, the kind of the set of affordable goods changes, which means our, our budget line is going to change. So when prices or income, so remember M is, is our income. If you want to keep it more general, we can say resources. So maybe your amount of time you have changes too. Um, so when prices or income changes, the bundles of goods um, that a consumer can afford also changes, which means our budget line is going to change. So let's first talk about income, even though I list it as prices or income, but let's start with, with income first. So if there is an increase in income, so if M gets larger, what this is going to do is going to shift out the budget line. And it's a parallel shift out. Now, conversely, if we have a decrease in income, in income, so I should be trying to coordinate here, uh, there's a shift in, and again, this is a parallel shift in um, the budget line. So an increase in income is going to kind of increase the different combinations of, of goods that we could potentially afford. And what it does to the budget line is it's going to have a parallel shift out. Well, a decrease in income is going to cause a parallel shift in of the budget constraint, or the budget line, I should say. And what this is doing is it's decreasing the, the different combinations of goods that we can afford. So let's maybe do that graphically. Maybe I'll just call this case one and, and case two. I think I can fit it in down here. Just draw them a little bit smaller. Obviously, just you know, let me know if, if the writing is, is too small or if it's really big and you want me to try to fit in more on, on each of these kind of pages. Um, just let me know. I'll try to keep my writing somewhat clear, but uh, we can tell that my writing is a bit of a chicken scratch. Uh, but I'll try to keep it clear. That's why I kind of talk my way through it. So even if maybe you can't read the word perfectly, you can hear me say what it is. So remember, we have uh, good two and good one. Originally, let's say this is the budget line, where it's M1 over P2. And we'll say M1 over P1. So let's say M1 is the original budget, and the budget increases. It's going to cause this parallel shift out. So the new budget divided by P2 is going to be the new intercept over there, and the new budget divided by P1 is going to be the new intercept over here. And because you know we're talking about an increase in income, which means M2 is bigger than M1, we have this kind of parallel shift out. It's not changing the slope. The opportunity cost is still the same because the slope's still the same. All it's doing is it's changing the, the common or the different bundles of goods this consumer can afford. We could do the same thing for the case, you know, if we have a, a decrease in income, though I think it's going to be fairly uh, straightforward, or maybe it's fairly obvious from what we drew over here. Again, x2 and x1. Maybe it's just helpful to talk our way through it again. And originally, we have an income of m1, which means this is how much of good 2 we could afford if we spent all of our budget on good 2. And this is the amount of good 1 we could afford. Again, that should be m1, our original 
budget. Then what's happening is that M is going down, which is causing this parallel shift in of the budget line. Because now M2 is smaller than M1, which means M2, a smaller num number divided by P2, it's going to be smaller. And the same thing over here. So this is what changes in disposable income um, are going to do to our budget lines. Now let's think about uh, price changes and what that's going to do. And it's going to be a little bit more compli uh, complicated, I mean, I guess, because it's going to change the slope if we just change one of the prices. Or we can make it more complicated and change you know, two prices at once. So let's think about price changes now. I don't know, I should have said they're more complicated, I mean, but they're just changing the slope, whereas before the slope wasn't changing. Um, so let's think about, maybe these other pens show up a little bit better. So what if P1 increased, but P2 remained the same, remained constant, let's say, or whatever it was before. So let's say P1 increased from from P1 to P1, let's say, let's call it prime. Okay, so let's draw out what our budget line looks like. Amount of X a good two on the y-axis, the amount of good one on the x. So remember we figured out our two intercepts by taking our total budget or total disposable income, which is m dollars, and dividing it by the price of the good. So let's say this is the original budget line. And again, m over p1 over here. But then this price of good one, the good on our x-axis, is increasing. So what's gonna happen? Well, this intercept isn't changing because M is not changing and P2 isn't changing. But this intercept is changing because the denominator here is getting bigger. Well, if the denominator is getting bigger, that means this fraction is getting smaller. And so we can think about this budget line kind of rotating in. There's supposed to be terrible arrows, sorry. <laughs> So now we have M over P1 prime. And because P1 prime is, is greater than P1, that's why it kind of rotates in. So the slope now negative P1 prime over P2. And we know that now the numerator is getting bigger over here, this means that the opportunity cost of, of good one is increasing. Because now in order to get one more unit of good one, they have to give up P1 prime over P2 units of good two, whereas they only used to give up P1 over P2 units of good two. And P1 prime is bigger than P1, right? So the opportunity cost of good one is increasing, while the opportunity cost, if you looked at the other way, of good two is decreasing. So this is what happens when there's a price change. Now we could you know, obviously change the price of good two as well and leave the price of good one constant. We just, it would just rotate a different way. We could also look at what happens if there's a decrease in the price of, of good one uh, rather than an increase like we looked at here. So as I was just saying, we could also look at what happens if the price of good one goes down as opposed to goes up. So if price of good one decreases from P1 
to, let's say, P1 double prime and price a good 2 remains the same. We could look at that situation as well. Well, here's our Cartesian plane, x2, x1, good 2, and a good 1. We have this original situation, m over p2 and m over p1. And now the price of good 1 decreased. And again, nothing is changing on this intercept. M's not changing and P2 isn't changing. On this intercept, M isn't changing, but P1 is getting smaller. So the denominator is getting smaller. So that means it's going to shift out or rotate out this way. M over P1 double prime. And now the opposite could be said about uh, the opportunity cost of x1 and x2, as we said before. Okay, so we've covered income changes. Those are parallel shifts in or parallel shifts, uh, shifts in or shift out. Uh, we talk about price changes as well. So we've kind of concentrated on changing the price of good one, but you could also change the price of good two and you know, you're using the same logic here to change this intercept here. We could also change, I'll just put this in brackets, also have price changes in both goods. Okay, so now let's move on and, and quickly talk about numeraire goods and how you know we can always express things in relative terms.